so hello so here we are moving for uh, art, for the part three of um, uh, artificial intelligence introduction okay you are going to continue to address some history topics and uh, we have seen in the previous video that there was the boom one the world of fashion artificial intelligence now we are going to address the boom two which is mainly about uh, expert systems and then we are going to move for boom three which is mainly about machine learning so in boom two we can see that is in these periods of the 80s and 90s and we got here the main part is the knowledge engineering and some uh, important uh, in language like prolog lisp and uh, expert systems so uh, the boom tool is associated with mainly with the production system and expert systems so a production rule can assume uh, the, one of these forms if the condition then action or if condition then fact and uh, <clears throat> an application area for production systems are expert systems a pioneering uh, research in this area was john mccarthy and uh, he was the the lisp creator you can find ma more about john mccarthy in this site and uh, some uh, pioneer examples of expert systems are these ones here three but you can find more in the in the internet there was a big expectation about production systems but then in the application it did in the, at the time it didn't work that well so we uh, then have now we are living now what you can call the boom three the machine learning okay and now we are we have these uh, keywords okay uh, deep learning and what and so on and artificial uh, intelligence for social good so what is machine learning oh i extracted this uh, quote this quote from I, the ibm site and it states here that machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence and computer science which focus on the use of data and algorithms to imitate the way that humans learn gradually improving its accuracy so the, this guy is confused because okay so machine learning is, is in fact a branch from artificial intelligence it is so um, what are the main uh, and this is in Portuguese, uh, sorry. What are the main sub areas from machine learning? And uh, they are, for, these are the three of them, artificial neural networks, evolutionary computation, and case-based reasoning. So this is also a, a kind of a, a typification. So we have uh, the big uh, outside circle is artificial intelligence in red, then we have the machine learning in blue deep learning in green and inside of deep learning okay we we have the neural networks so this is the order artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning and neural networks and uh, so what are the associated artificial intelligence areas so we got statistics probability probabilistic methods machine learning uh, we got expert systems, pattern recognition, vis visualization, okay, and then we got evolution computation, neural networks, and fuzzy logic. These three uh, are grouped in one, one, an area called soft computing. In this in, in globs, fuzzy logic, neural networks, and evolution computation. And all of these areas are connected to what is called computational intelligence or artificial intelligence. So this is also another uh, typification we got here in the top, intelligent technology, okay, you see here. In, and then we got computational intelligence here, to the left, and we got evolutionary computation, artificial neural networks, and fuzzy logic. You can see that fuzzy logic is, is a little bit here in between in a kind of uh, soap of mathematics and also so the mathematics connects this green part the natural science especially biology to the social sciences according to uh, the UNESCO definition 
And so in here, in the right, you got artificial intelligence in a more classical way, classical AI, and also distribute artificial intelligence. Okay. So as usual, this is a, a taxonomy and it's quite a old one. So other areas of uh, artificial intelligence is search algorithms, games, automated reasoning, production systems and expert systems, cellular automata, neural computation, evolutionary computation, knowledge representation, and reasoning with uncertainty. All these are uh, main topics in, uh, in an introduction course to artificial intelligence. And we are going to address all of them in this course. So, one of the important parts about uh, history is the development of, of the first uh, artificial neuron, which was proposed by two chaps, McCulloch and Pitts, in 1943. So, we got here a photo of these two uh, gentlemen, and we got here a representation of an artificial neuron. So, we can see here the inputs, here, and then this is the sum, and the activation function, and the output. There's different representations about these uh, neurons, and uh, there was an evolution. And uh, one important evolution was uh, passing from the... McCullough and Pitts uh, neuron to the Rosenblatt neuron in 1957. Rosenblatt, which is here in this photo, was a brilliant scientist and um, not only he uh, developed um, or extended uh, the concept of the, new, the artificial neuron uh, to take uh, real values and with weights. Uh, but also he designed a, uh, or proposed a, a learning algorithm which is called uh, the, uh, the perceptron rule. So you can see he published in 1958 here, you can see here, in these uh, research trends from Cornell, uh, the title was The Design of an Intelligent Automaton by Frank Rosenblatt. And if you see like the first uh, title is Introducing the perceptron, a machine which senses, recognizes, remembers, and responds like human mind. So this is unbelievable. That, uh, so these guys are really, really brilliant. In 1958, they were already trying to uh, to invent uh, things that we still are uh, tackling nowadays. Okay, you can see some of the machines that he he, he proposed. is a very interesting chap. This one. Okay, but then, okay, this perceptron is also known as uh, Threshold Logic Tuning, T-A-L-U, can be represented in, the, in several ways. This is another, another represent, graphical representation of a, a perceptron, and this is another one as well, where you can see here the, this is the bias input, okay? So we are going to speak with, with the, later on in the neural networks, on you know, the perceptrons. Of course, the, the learning then was uh, was developed, and we got this error feedback. And uh, you have to know what is feedback. To so this like passing the the error from the output to the input, as it is represented here. And we this with the perceptron rule, and later on with uh, some improvements uh, like uh, Adeline. It improved the, 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 the concepts of learning in neural networks. And of course, you got then the neural networks. This is a feed for neural network. And um, how does the learning take place in the neural network? That is a very, very important question. And of course, in that uh, question, we have to uh, deal with the back propagation of the error. And uh, these three authors, Rommel Hart, Hinton, and Williams, propose, or they were the, the ones who actually popularized, because actually there were some previous guys who have been uh, proposing uh, this back, back propagation of the errors, but nobody knew about it. And so these guys really, in this publication, uh, they really triggered uh, and spread this concept of the back propagation of the error. And of course, uh, then it makes possible with another other improvements to 
two, uh, two paths to deep learning and uh, now convolutional neural networks. We got here in the, in the left uh, a representation of a simple neural network and to the right a representation of deep learning neural network um, with several layers. And uh, now everybody speaks about deep learning. 